Hi everyone, my name is Eric. I am a former competitive figure skater and this is my figure skating reaction series. For those of you who don't know me, I am a five-time U.S. National Championships competitor through the senior level. I trained for about 15 years in the Chicagoland area with top coaches, including most recently Olympic coach Denise Myers. So long story short, I know my stuff. Let's get started. Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. Wow, so much has happened these last few weeks at the Olympics in Beijing. Don't even know where to begin, but as we all know, because of all of this crazy stuff that has been going on, Many skaters and skates have really been overshadowed. I'm thinking of, for example, Olympic moment skates like those of Young Yu and Alyssa Liu in the women's event because of all of the drama that happened with the Russian women in the same event. One thing that I think has completely been overshadowed uh, was something that really honestly astonished me, not because I hadn't seen it before, but because it somehow felt more blatant than ever before in front of everyone's eyes on Olympic television. It was in the men's event. It is what I now call the most shocking Olympic technique that I think I have probably ever seen in my life. I wasn't sure if shocking is the right word. I was kind of looking for other words on the thesaurus, other synonym adjectives came to mind like jarring, appalling, frightful, astounding, stupefying, etc. Take your pick. Okay, enough chat. Here it is. I am talking about Marisi Kvita... Ah, try again. So yes, I am talking about Marisi Vitalashvili of Georgia. Please excuse me if I butchered that name. Um, but the fact that I truly believe that Marisi did five quadruple Sauka jumps between the short and the long programs at, these, at this Olympics. Just in case anyone wasn't aware, in the free skate, you're allowed to repeat a jump a maximum of one time. And in the short program, you may not repeat a jump at all unless it's two jumps in a row in a combination. So for example, you can do a triple toe loop, triple toe loop, or a triple loop, triple loop. But you can't do like a triple toe loop, you know, double toe loop, and then like a triple toe loop for your like solo jump. Anyways, Marisi supposedly attempts one quad sao and one quad toe loop in the short program, and then one quad sao and two quad toe loops in the free skate. But his quad toes look literally exactly the same as his quad sao cows. And so like, they should be counted as sows, I think, and many other people think as well. Let's go to slow motion. All right, so let's first take a look at Maurice's quadruple sao cow jump, um, which is perfectly great and fine, by the way. So he does his mohawk into it. This is the slow-mo version, and I think I slowed it down even more, going frame by frame. So you can see that his you know, left leg is on this nice inside edge, or sorry, his left, left foot. He puts his right foot down a bit, which is totally fine. Um, and then he goes right up into the quad sao cow. And by the way, there is some pre-rotation there, but that's pretty much fine and required on the, on the sao cow jump. Anyways, his quad sao cow is great. And here's the full jump. And he goes to a, to, to a uh, toe loop after that. So that's the good jump of his short program, by the way, at the Beijing Olympics. So now let's go next to his quad toe loop in the same exact program, okay? I'm putting it right here. So he does, you can't see it here, but he's, he does his same uh, three-turn mohawk thing, which doesn't really matter. What matters is... On a toe loop jump, by the way, it's called a toe loop because you're supposed to pick uh, your left foot if you're if you're a righty and spitting uh, counterclockwise, pick on the toe and vault up into there. Okay, so but look at what Maurice does right here. Okay, it looks pretty much the same thing as like a right now. The left uh, foot is on the inside edge. The right foot comes down. Um, so right here is where it's supposed to be considered a toe loop, right there. Okay, 
But lo- let's go back and look at this takeoff. It's wild. So the left foot on a toe loop, again, is supposed to lift up into the air, put the toe pick down, and vault into the air. So his left foot is clearly skating on the ice right here. His weight is kind of on the right foot, but like not exactly. Like his left foot is still on the ice, right? Like, do you guys see that he it does not leave the ice? The left foot does not leave the ice. Um, he kind of goes... Uh, not onto his toe pick here. It's almost just like scratches um, onto the toe for like a hot second, but that doesn't mean that's a toe pick because it's, again, it's not picking on the toe loop and vaulting up. And also, moreover, it, he goes right back down. Do you see that? He tries to be on his toe, and then he goes right back down onto a flat blade, s- c- continuing to ride that left back inside edge instead of toe picking and vaulting up, and then he goes up into the air. That is absolutely wild, my friend. That is a quad sow cow. Like, I don't know how else to say it. Um, it was beautifully landed. Um, so good job for him. But you see how he like attempts to, to pick. It seems like it's, it's like he's trying to make it look like a toe loop, but it's just that's I don't see it. Anyways, that's pretty much that. Wait, sorry, really quick, y'all. I want to show the long program actually as well, but this is a different angle and it's awesome to see. This is a quad toe loop, supposedly. Um, and so he's going to that same thing. Okay, look at this angle, okay? So again, left foot not coming off on the ice. It looks like he's almost on his toe like kind of skidding it, but it's not off the ice for one. And look, right here, you can see his blade goes flat and... He, he's on an edge. This is an edge jump. The difference between a sow cow and a toe loop is sow cow is an edge jump. You launch off the left back inside edge into the jump uh, and don't and not on the toe. A toe loop, you launch it. This is the probably the most clear example right here. See this? This is on the edge. He's doing a sow cow right here. That's a sow cow jump. That is the most damning evidence I have seen. So should have probably shown that one first, but that one is... Um, and also, I think he falls on this one, maybe. Oh, he kind of steps out. So anyways, that was a full-on sow cow. I think I might have his other one right here. I think it's supposed to be a toe loop as well. Um, actually, you know what? Is this, is this one more of a toe loop? No, it just makes more of a splash on the ice, so it, it gives the illusion. All right. <laughs> so Maurice is basically using the exact same technique and doing the exact same jump here, really. But the judges kind of willfully ignore that and just call it a quadruple toe loop and give him very positive, high grades of execution on it. Let's take a look at Nathan Chen's quad toe loop, which is very good, um, just as a point of comparison. All right, so this is Nathan Chen going into his quadruple toe loop dump from a couple years ago, I think. Um, here it is in real time. Beautiful. All right, so now let's go back and slow mo it, slow mo it like we did with Maurice. All right, so Nathan Chen goes into it from a spread eagle, which is really awesome, um, but doesn't really matter. Um, this angle, by the way, is also really good at at showing all this. Okay, so this is so he's in a spread eagle right there, and then he goes into the three turn, which again for toe loop three turn mohawk doesn't really matter how you get in. This is the part that matters. So you're on that back left uh, inside edge, left foot. His right foot goes down. You see a clear transfer of weight to his right side. His left foot comes up, see, in the air. Clearly in the air right here. He picks right there with his toe pick, not his flat blade. Which, by the way, um, this is kind of a tangent, but I guess some people, I think I've seen some people like pick, quote unquote pick, a toe loop with their flat blade, maybe that counts. Anyways, it's supposed to be a toe loop, so it's picking with a toe. Um, his foot was lifted into the air, and then he goes up into the jump. And here is the rest of the jump. There we go. I get that the Olympics aren't exactly the place all of a sudden to kind of impose harsh or just correct rules on a skater, but that's kind of the whole problem. Mauricio has been doing this exact same technique and same thing for a long time now. And many people see it, know about it, talk about it, 
make fun of it on Twitter or whatever else. But no one is actually that. Okay, not no one. No, like judge or ISU. It seems like official or whatever people who actually judge and and kind of make the rules of the sport no one's actually calling it out as wrong and that's like fundamentally problematic in just the realm of sport in general who knows does it have something to do with one of his coaches a terry tudbaritza i mean she has some power in the isu anyways i don't want to rip too hard on mauricio or anything at all because at the end of the day it's not really his fault if anything, if you want to blame the technique, um, it's whoever taught him that. I do not know how he learned that. That's not something that's like very common that you would be taught. Like pretty much no one else really does it like that. As far as I know, if someone else has good examples of it, please feel free to let me know. But it's really the fault of the judges for not calling that out, for not judging it how it should be. Like at the very least, if you're gonna count them as different jumps, which honestly at this point, like I can't even tell the difference when he does it, especially not in real time. I think the judges only know it because of his planned content and like watching him in practice and whatever. But like at the very least, that should be getting like negative GOE for like a bad takeoff. At the very least, if not just being called you know, if you're doing those same jumps repeated in like the short or in the long or whatever too many times, it'll just get zero points. Oh, by the way, um, I didn't watch the whole podcast, but Nancy Kerrigan was on Polina Edmonds' podcast uh, recently, and she made some comment about how the flip and the Lutz jump, right? They're very similar jumps, but the flip is on the inside edge and the Lutz is, Lutz is on the outside edge. She was saying when people get edge calls... Um, you know, they get a couple of points off, maybe sometimes it's just like an edge of tension, so they don't even get that much off, maybe the GOE is affected. But anyways, Nancy Kerrigan, who was like a two-time Olympic medalist, all of that, she had the hot take of like, um, those, if you're doing, you know, a flip and then a left with the wrong edge, those are like the same jump in a way. They're actually, you know, they're, they're, they're different jumps, let's in the flip. And so therefore it shouldn't even be counted at all. That was a very hot take. I don't know if I quite agree with how harsh that is, but like, I would love, uh, and I don't know if she talks about this at all in the podcast, I'm guessing not, but I would love Nancy Kerrigan to please go look at Maurice's quadruple sow cow and toe loop and let's see what she thinks. Anyways, I think that Maurice was almost a little bit lucky that so much else went on at this Olympic Games and also that he didn't place that high. So it just didn't get that much like kind of attention because I'm telling you, if Maurice somehow had pulled off a medal, which is like in the realm of possibilities, probably not, but it was in the realm. If he had pulled off a medal at the Olympics, especially if it was over like a Yuzuru Hanyu, people would be up in arms. Online community would be like up in flames, I swear. Anyways, um, yeah, I guess, you know what? This is a little bit more lighthearted anyways. Like this is kind of crazy, but I don't know. He. He's, he has a great great quad sap, don't get me wrong, but I don't know. This is just like, I have no idea what's going on. This is kind of wild. Um, but anyways, that's pretty much all I have to say today. Hope you enjoyed. If you like this video, smash that like button, subscribe to my channel, and turn on that notification bell. See you next time.